Hello, Kaplan Universe and MedHeads Worldwide. It's your boy Chris Paris from Brooklyn. I'm actually coming to you live from the New York City Midtown Center. Just finished the medicine class, and like I promised you guys yesterday, I'm gonna give you guys a short snippet on thyroid cancer, which is now becoming the fourth to fifth most common cancer world in the United States, I should say, right? So it's a big deal. Thankfully, we do very well with it, but you have to understand it because you will see it on the exam and you will see it in real life. So, thyroid cancer. Right? There's four main subtypes. Four main subtypes. Four. Okay? The most common of which, by far, by far is something called papillary carcinoma. Papillary carcinoma, which accounts for about 80 to 85% of cases. Alright? The second most common is something called follicular carcinoma. Follicular carcinoma, which accounts for 10 to 15% of cases. Now this is very, very important because these two cancers are what are called the differentiated carcinomas. These are the differentiated thyroid carcinomas. Now, why does that matter? It's extremely important. Because if you remember from pathology, my boy John Barone I was with the other night, differentiated means the cells remember where they came from, right? So if you have a well differentiated, for example, colon cancer, the, the cells look like colonic epithelium. In this case, these cells look and remember, oh, I'm a thyroid cell. And if I'm a thyroid cell, what do I love to eat? I love to eat iodine. Oh, that's right, I love eating iodine. So what happens? These are the guys that we could treat with radioactive iodine ablation. Wow, see, that's why it matters, it's a big deal. The way we treat these totally, treatment, is total thyroidectomy. Total thyroidectomy, followed by radioactive iodine ablation. So you remove the entire thyroid, all gone, goodbye. And then you burn whatever's left with radioactive iodine. Why? Because they're differentiated carcinomas and they remember that they uptake iodine. They have an intact potassium, so, excuse me, sodium iodide transporter, right? It's a big deal. What do we use as a disease marker for these guys? We use, as a disease marker, we use thyroglobulin levels, TG. Thyroglobulin levels as a disease marker after thyroidectomy and after radioactive iodine ablation to make sure the disease is gone and not returning, okay? The cure rates for these guys, over 90%, between 90 and 95%. You do have your rare subdivisions, your rare variants, which can be very aggressive, but I have to tell you in general, the cure rate for this, over 92%, very good. Now, when we get to the rare categories now, the third most common is called medullary carcinoma. Medullary carcinoma, which accounts for about 2 to 3% of cases. Right? Now, medullary thyroid carcinoma is actually a misnomer. It's not really the correct name. It's not really a thyroid cancer. It's a cancer of the parafollicular cells, not the follicular cells, which are thyroid, but of the parafollicular cells. These are the guys that make what? These are the guys that make calcitonin, right? These are the guys that make calcitonin. And that's why we use calcitonin as a disease marker for medullary carcinoma. We treat medullary carcinoma with surgery. This is only a surgical disease. That's it. There's no iodine here. So don't get that confused and don't let them fool you on the exam or in real life. You don't give iodine to medullary because it's not a thyroid cancer. It's a parafollicular carcinoma. It's a cancer of the C cells, if you remember. Calcitonin producing cells, right? Another very important point though about medullary carcinoma is, another important point is, if you have a diagnosis, a pathologic diagnosis of medullary carcinoma, what must, must you do? Who remembers? Anyone need a man? You want a man? Do you want two men? Most, most women, I don't believe, know what to do with one man, right? So if you need a man, what do you have to do? You have to look for men if you have medullary carcinoma. Which men do you want? You want one or two? You, want, you need to rule out MEN2, right? MEN2, which is what? Medullary carcinoma, pheochromocytoma, and parathyroid hyperplasia. Hyperplasia. Not adenoma, but hyperplasia, all right? So if you have medullary carcinoma diagnosed, you must look for two men, okay? Lastly, finally, the least common carcinoma, by far, thankfully, is something called anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, which accounts 
for less than 1% of cases. Less than 1% of cases, thankfully. The reason why I say that, guys, is because this is one of the most lethal cancers in men. This cancer makes small cell lung cancer look like a vacation. That's how bad this is. When this is diagnosed, you're talking weeks. Weeks to months, that's it. It's very bad, very aggressive, very lethal. One of the most lethal in men, all right? How will it present? Typically an older patient with a rapidly growing neck mass. Where they'll tell you, Doc, I was fine just two weeks ago, and now I have a golf ball coming out of my neck. What's that about, right? Your differential diagnosis at that point is only two things, anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, or if they're lucky, thyroid lymphoma. That's it, all right, that's it. How do we treat anaplastic? Surgical debulking, but like I told you guys, in general, the, the outlook is extremely poor. Weeks, weeks to months, mortality, very high. All right, that's thyroid cancer in a nutshell, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little snippet. Stay tuned for more. See you guys later.